Hi there. So one of the accounting standards that you are going to be meeting in the exam hall is IAS 36, Impairment of Assets. Now this is very fundamental to the syllabus, whether the examiner asks you a dedicated question on impairment or not. Sometimes in consolidated, uh, when you are preparing consolidated financial statements, then you will be uh, meeting impairment. It can be impairment of goodwill, maybe it can be impairment of investment property, or it can even be impairment on some intangible assets of a business or a whole cash generating unit of a business. So when it comes to impairment of assets, how do we go about it and when do we uh, say an asset is impaired and how do we even measure the impairment and also how do we recognize the impairment in the financial statement of a company, in the financial statement of a company. So we say that an asset is said to be impaired when the carrying amount of the asset is greater than the recoverable amount of the assets. Now, if you remember IAS 16, when we talk about the carrying value of the asset, it's simply going to be the cost of the asset minus accumulated depreciation. That is, if we are going with the cost module. But if we are going with the revaluation module, that means that the carrying value of the asset is going to be the fair value of the asset minus accumulated depreciation or any impairment losses. So if we have an asset and the cost of the asset is $200,000, and we are using the asset for five years, and we bought the asset in 20x5, and we are preparing the financial statement for 20x8, meaning we've used the asset for, for 20x5, 20x6, 20x7, 20x8. So if we are measuring the carrying value of the asset, so the asset is $20,000, every year straight line method, we divide it by five, every year we are charging $2,000. So if we use the asset for four years, meaning that it's $8,000, so $10,000 minus $8,000, that means that the carrying value of the asset will now be $2,000. So if we get a carrying value of the assets, then we need to test because IAS 16 requires that at, at least once every year, a company has to what, revalue the assets. The reason why you revalue an asset or revalue its cash generating unit is, just, is to make sure that the assets actually represent the value of the company, right? So that you, you don't carry an asset over its value, which means that your financial position will be uh, will be presented in, in a way that will be less than how it should have been presented, or you, sh you don't undervalue your assets as a company. So usually, even though the cost model is there, many businesses are going to be using the revaluation model. So you calculate your current value, and it is 2,000 at the end of the fourth year. But then you are testing to see if the asset has suffered impairment. So you need to get what we call the recoverable amount. Now, what is the recoverable amount? To calculate the recoverable amount of an asset, the recoverable amount of an asset is simply going to be the higher of the value in use and fair value less cost to sell. Very important. So to get the recoverable amount, you are going to first find out what is the value in use of the asset, and then what is the fair value less cost to sell? The two figures, when you, the higher becomes what the recoverable amount. So when we say value in use, what, is it, what does it mean? The value in use is simply the returns we are going to get if we continue to use the asset in our business. Okay? So usually, we are, the examiner is going to say that the asset can be used in the next five years. And in the next five years, we'll get a net revenue of, say, $3 million. So if we can use the asset in the next five years, and we'll get a net revenue of, say, $3 million, then we will have to discount that cash flows into present time. That is why I put here present value of future cash flows from continuous usage of the asset. So the value in use is the present value of future cash flows from the continuous usage of the asset. So like the scenario I gave you, if we are going to be receiving $3 million every year for the next five years from the continuous usage of the asset, we discount that into present value, then, then we get a value in use. Then sometimes the examiner could say that after that fifth year, we are going to sell the asset for say uh, $1.5 million. 
meaning we need to discount that disposal value also and add it to the present value of the net revenue that we're going to get and that will give us a total for the value in use. I hope you get that right. Comment below if you get that concept well. Comment below. Now, so that is how we calculate the value in use. Then we come to fair value less cost to sell. It is the same as the net realizable value. The fair value less cost to sell simply means how much money can we get if we should sell the assets today? That is a fair value less cost to sell. So usually if today we are selling the asset, we will sell it for $10 million and we will incur a cost. That is less cost to sell, meaning the cost we are incurring in the selling of the asset of say $3 million. Then fair value less cost to sell is going to be $7 million. Okay, so once we get a fair value less cost to sell on the asset or the cash generating unit, we now compare the two answers that we get. So the recoverable amount is going to be the higher of the two. So let's say for instance, we, we calculated the present value of the future cash flows and then the present value of the disposal uh, uh, value or the resale value of the asset at the end of the fifth year and everything leads us to let's say um, 12.5 million dollars so that is the value in use then let's say we, we find out about the fair value less cost to sell how much we can raise if we should sell the assets today after we deduct the direct cost of selling the assets so let's say that one is also maybe around 8.5 million dollars so what are we saying? Recoverable amount should be the higher of the two. So if you look at it, value in use is 12.5 million. Fair value less cost to sell is 8.5 million. So which one is the highest? The higher is going to be what? The 12.5 million dollars. So this 12.5 million dollars becomes our recoverable amount. 12.5 million. That becomes our recoverable amount. Once we have the recoverable amount, we compare that to the current value of the asset. Maybe the current value of the asset is $9 million. Oh, no. In that case, it will not be so. Let's say that is going to be $15 million. So our recoverable amount, our current value is $15 million. Our recoverable amount is $12.5 million. Meaning that the asset has suffered what? an impairment. So when we find it out, the difference is going to be 2.5 million. So this 2.5 million is what we refer to as impairment loss. Now the question we now ask ourselves is, how do we treat this impairment loss? Because it's a loss, we are going to take it to the income statement, right? We take it to the income statement. So all we do is to debit the income statement with a 2.5 million. And then we credit the property, plant, and equipment, which has suffered the impairment, with the $2.5 million. So that is how we account for impairment loss. Now remember, you get your value in use, you get your fair value less cost to sell. I can guarantee you, for the value in use, the examiner will require you to do the calculation. So make sure you get that. Now, if you do the workings, and as I illustrated, I put, at first I, I wrote $9 million here. If you did it and you realize that the recoverable amount is greater than the current value of the asset, meaning the asset has not suffered any impairment. So if the recoverable amount is higher than the current value, then the asset has not suffered any impairment. Rather, it is going to be a revaluation surplus in relation to that. So this is what you need to understand about impairment, IAS 16. Comment below with questions and I'll answer them in the next video.